We both believe that rethinking education is the key to sustainability in architecture. How do you relate sustainability in your projects and your architecture practice? Well, you know, that's a really uh, fundamental issue actually. Uh, so sustainability for us is the foundation of all thinking and doing. <laughs> and you know what what the beauty is about sustainability, you know, we we found a position where it is not a limitation, but actually an opening, right? An opening to new dimensions that we are, you know, exploring in teaching as much as in our projects. And, you know, there's so much more to come. Your Austrian pavilion during the Milan Universal Exposition was highly, highly acclaimed. This breathe pavilion exemplified how bioclimate can serve as a potent design tool for upcoming urban practices. How did this concept of the Austrian pavilion inspire your Grüne Erde headquarters as a prototype building environment? The Austrian pavilion really emerged out of our thinking and doing at the Land Lab at the Institute of Architecture and Landscape at, at, at TU Graz with my team. So it came really f out of a discourse. And, you know, that beautiful dissemination from, a, you know, a, a the theoretical and thinking environment into reality, into the potential of a sensual perception, right? was exactly the way that we were imagining to bring that concept because it is not aimed to be a theoretical realm, but a practical that wants to be experienced, you know, with our bodily um, perception. So that was the ideal basis to bring this in an actual also, um, you know, um, environment that has the full potential to, to be part of a larger dissemination in our society with a headquarter for the Grüne Erde. So we could apply the same concept of bioclimatic design, designing without air conditioning, but cooling with plant performance on the scale of 12,000 square meters. And we, we need to go, we need to take a look. In fact, you redefine a total budget of a building in including all that is the living elements, the plants and the work on the living elements from gardeners and caretakers, and you reduce totally the cost of climatization. That was actually something that emerged uh, along the development uh, of that technology. I want to call it plant technology, right? Uh, as you know, 3.5 billion years of you know um, development of uh, plant life uh, when you go into micro you know the microscopic level you really see the technological level of evapotranspiration for instance and so these aliveness of the vegetation right the, the, this potency of co-designing with this aliveness of plant life um, you know was something that we found alongside the development of, of the Breathe Pavilion and the taking it into the larger scale of uh, the building environment of Grüne Erde, where we understood that 25% of building costs that are usually allocated to building systems like climatization, we could redistribute that amount of funds to plants and their gardeners. That's what we did. In the context of your study for the city of Palmas, you declared, and I might cite you, when the traditional distinction between urban areas and natural living spaces are fundamentally challenged, it paves the way for unforeseen blend of urban design processes, functionality and stakeholders to emerge. How to invent or reshape the city of tomorrow in connection with the environment. My first statement would be there is not a single city of tomorrow, so then there are thousands and millions cities of tomorrow because they all should be aimed to emerge out of their condition, 
their climate, their tradition and culture, obviously. And so Palmas is a city in the tropics. And it was actually built on, you know, the imagination of a Hilbersheimer urban design layout with vast streets, you know, vast distances. So what, what was, you know, the potential that we could see in this vastness is actually an open space that can be reconsidered as a forest. And so our, I think, um, idea emerges out of a deep, almost meditation of what it is to understand, you know, the forest and the potential of the forest. So if we go into the forest, into a tropical forest, to, you know, imagine the potential of living in a forest that still has to be grown, right? Um, from within the thought space of a forest. And that makes all the difference. So we're not adding vegetations to the city, to a modernist idea of a city, but we are really listening and watching um, and imagining this future space from the spirit of the forest.